Uh, hmm? Yeah, we're ready. It's just recording. I'm, turning, I'm talking to you. So just go over the story from the beginning. So it started seven or eight years ago uh, during an intramural soccer game. I got hit in the head by the ball. I'd been hit in the head by the ball my whole life. But this time, I guess it hit me in the wrong spot at the wrong velocity, and it did something. I didn't think much of it at the time. I just kept playing the game. It wasn't until two weeks later when my grandparents came to visit that they noticed I was drinking a lot of water at lunch, and I didn't think much of it. I thought it was just because it was getting warmer out, so I was getting dehydrated a bit, so I was drinking more, but I promised I'd go get it checked out. So I went to the hospital, and they did a water deprivation exam. Overnight, my arm looked like I was a heroin addict because they'd had medical students come in during the night every hour to test my blood. And they concluded that I had diabetes insipidus. My pituitary gland had been damaged to the point where it didn't produce antidiuretic hormone anymore, meaning that my body wasn't regulating fluids, so if I didn't drink any water, I would eventually pee out all the fluids in my body. Uh, so from that point on, I had to take synthetic antidiuretic hormone twice a day, uh, which is kind of annoying, but anyway, that's life now. Um, so about five years ago now, I went down to Mexico for my first season of uh, field work on an archaeological project in the Yucatan Peninsula, and I brought a bunch of pills to last me the whole trip, but after a while, the pills started to disintegrate into a powder, and I thought that that meant they were also losing their potency. So I started to take what I thought was the appropriate amount, but I was getting more and more dehydrated. And so I was drinking more water. I was taking more of this pill powder, uh, but I was getting sicker and sicker until the point where I couldn't leave my hammock for an entire week. Finally, I was taken to the hospital and they did a couple of tests and they realized that I was not dehydrated. I was actually overhydrated and had been poisoning myself with these pills. I diluted my blood to the point where my sodium level had dropped way down. Turns out my condition carried a 50-50 mortality rate, but they didn't tell me until afterwards. So I'd had a near-death experience without even realizing it. Uh, after four days in the hospital in the air conditioning, after having been in the extreme heat for a while, I lost my voice. Uh, I hadn't eaten or drunk anything really for a week, so I was pretty out of it. And like a true idiot, I decided to pick myself up with a double or triple shot espresso, which uh, promptly set off a 24-hour manic episode. And I didn't sleep all night, obviously. I feel really bad for my roommate who had to put up with me. I was running around the room doing some crazy stuff, I guess. So in the morning, after staying up all night, uh, feeling great. I decided it would be a good idea to hop a bus across the peninsula about a four and a half hour drive to Cancun to catch a flight to New York to let my parents know that everything was okay. On the bus I finally got some sleep and when I woke up I had adjusted a bit and realized that this was ridiculous. So immediately when I got to Cancun I got back on a bus to go back to the small town Oshkutska where we were working and about three hours into the trip, we were still on the East Coast, so I realized it was gonna take a long time. And my dad suggested that I just get in a cab, get back to the place where I was going as quickly as possible, no matter how much it cost. So I found a cab, but unfortunately, the driver had never driven outside of the tourist zone, but eventually he got some sketchy directions and we set off. And the guy didn't think I spoke much Spanish because I had laryngitis. And so I quickly fell asleep in the back seat when I woke up, it was dark. We were at a gas station. I don't know where. And another guy got in the front seat. Uh, I thought it was a little weird, but then they started to talk to each other, thinking that I didn't speak any Spanish. All right, uh, you'll drop me off in my town. Then I'll get in a van with my buddies, and we'll follow you, and we'll pull you over, and we'll machete the tourist, and you can go back to the coast, to the tourist place. Uh, no problem. This happens all the time. Uh, don't worry about it. Justicia social. We did finally drop the guy off in his village and continued on. I started to think about what I would do when they pulled us over and immediately 
I tried to muster as much voice as I could and started asking the cab driver what was going on, where is he taking me? He kept telling me, oh, no problem, no problem. You're going to a place called Nueva Vida. Uh, you'll be all right. And I was like, no, I don't want to go. Just turn around. We'll go back to Tulum. I don't have any money on me. They were going to pay you. When we got to the place you were taking me, there's nothing in this for you. Why are you doing this? I tried to guilt trip him, ask him about his kids. And he just kept telling me, no, no, it's fine, it's fine. And uh, finally, I started kind of hitting him on the shoulder, saying, I really want to go back. Just turn around. And he was obviously a little frazzled now that I was speaking Spanish. Finally, I got him to turn around. And we went back through the village that we had dropped the guy off at. And everyone in the village apparently was lining the streets, probably waiting for the machete tourists to come back. So he drove us back to Tulum. And we went to an ATM, and I got him a bunch of money. And I caught the bus the next day and did not get off this time. Uh, when I did get back to the town where we had been working, uh, after a couple of days, I started to feel kind of funny. I flew back home a few days later, and an MRI revealed that when they corrected my sodium level at the hospital, they did so too quickly. A classic osmotic demyelination, I think it was called. And as a result, I had stroke-like symptoms. I had trouble speaking properly. I couldn't balance myself. I broke a, a glass door at my parents' house because I fell into it because I couldn't stand up straight and it took about six months to completely recover from that and so that's 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 pretty much it <laughs>